Okay, everyone, before we get going, gotta give a quick disclaimer to the YouTube overlords. I'm not gonna be linking anything anywhere. I am not going to be showing you any websites where you can buy anything. We are just discussing the laws around AR pistols in the state of California. If you're curious about what the laws are, what you can do, what you can't do, what you might be able to do, stick around. Keep in mind, I'm not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. We're just having a discussion. I'm gonna provide you some information, and then from there, you can do your own research to make the right decision for you. If you ever get in trouble, remember, I'm not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. Please stop asking me to help you with your cases. I get a ton of DMs, and I swear people think I'm joking when I'm saying that. I'm just a dude talking about guns. So let's get into it. Before we get going, though, if you could drop a like on this video, I would very much appreciate that. Comment if you like. If you have any sort of rebuttals to any of the information that I say, drop it down in the comments. But we're talking about AR pistols. This is a topic that I have made a video about before when it comes to AR pistols. And when I made my BRN 180 video, I had several people ask me, Reno, how did you get that AR pistol? I thought AR pistols were illegal. Well, I have made a video on this before, but I figured it's clearly time for me to make an updated one. So we have to cover some legal text, and then I'm gonna discuss some of the methods that people use. There's basically three methods that people use to get them. One of them is definitely the most expensive but probably the most legal route um, but certainly the hardest to accomplish one of them is my preferred method and then well actually i guess there's four methods one of them is uh my second preferred method which i have done before and then there's the uh do-it-yourself route so i mean i guess there's also the secret fifth option which is crime uh but yeah so let's talk about some of the issues so I'm gonna be reading some stuff off my computer. So if you see me looking over here, that's what I'm doing. Hopefully that information will also be on the screen so you can see. So in the state of California, we have what is called a safe handgun roster. What that is, is a list of handguns that are available for sale from an FFL to a private individual. So if you wanna buy a handgun from an FFL in the state of California or out of state, have it sent to someone in California, it has to be on the handgun certified for sale, the not unsafe for sale handgun roster. The problem is nothing new can be added to this list because some of the requirements that it would actually require for a new handgun to be put on this list, meaning a new design for a semi-auto handgun, would be that you have to have micro stamping, which is where when the gun fires around, it stamps a serial number on the casing yeah, that seems very practical. Well, unfortunately, that doesn't exist. Now, there are some other requirements that are possible, like a loaded chamber indicator, a magazine disconnect. What a magazine disconnect is, is where if you were to pull the trigger, the gun wouldn't go bang if there were no magazine in it. You would have to have a loaded chamber indicator, so when there's something in the actual chamber, a big old red flag that says, this gun is loaded, you know, that would be on there. Has to have a physical safety as well as some other requirements as far as drop safety. You have to pay a huge amount of money and send in samples of the firearm to the DOJ to get it certified and proven that it is drop safe and all that jazz. Now, the problem is, Glock is not going to start putting physical safeties on their Gen 5 Glocks and no manufacturer is going to be doing micro stamping because the technology is simply not feasible and especially not feasible when the only state requiring it currently that I know of is California. So basically no new handguns. We're stuck with generation three Glocks and now you're probably saying, Reno, well, how the hell are people getting all these P320s and all these other guns? Well, law enforcement is actually exempt from that, meaning that they can just buy any handgun they want some law enforcement officers are able to legally sell those firearms in the state of California. Some law enforcement officers are only allowed to buy those. Whether you can buy and sell, I'm gonna leave that up for you to determine whether or not you fit those criteria. Your department should answer those questions for you. I'm not your lawyer, I am not your department. I don't know who you work for or what you do. In addition to that, we also have assault weapon laws. So for a semi-automatic pistol in the state of California, there are a list of features that you can't have if the gun has a detachable magazine. So if you have a semi-auto pistol with a detachable magazine, doesn't matter if it's rim fire or center fire, you cannot have a threaded barrel, a barrel shroud um, that partially or completely encircles the barrel. You cannot have a 
second hand grip. You cannot have a magazine well outside of the pistol grip. So you might be saying, Reno, this has all of those features. Well, this gun is fixed magazine. I can't actually take the magazine out unless I disassemble the action and pop it out. So that's how you get around that. So you would make your pistol fixed magazine for your ARs, right? The problem is still, how do you get a hold of it? Because clearly this handgun roster, clearly this is not on the safe handgun roster, right? Well, there's a few ways to get around that. But before we talk about those, we have to look at the California Department of Justice website for the safe handgun roster. Around the time that the Franklin, Franklin Armory CA7, which was a popular AR pistol that was a bolt action repeater, not a single shot, the DOJ put out a bulletin saying, <laughs> Aftermarket changes or modifications made to certain single shot pistols, in example, changing upper receivers, connecting gas tubes, may be considered manufacturing these pistols into assault weapons. See California Penal Code section, whatever, whatever, whatever. The purchaser could be in violation of Penal Code section 30600, prohibiting the manufacture of assault weapons. Well, okay, so when you do that by changing the upper or connecting the gas tube, make it fixed magazine, that would avoid that sort of issue with making an assault weapon. Well, the second thing on that bulletin was alterations of a single shot pistol, an example, changing upper receivers, connecting gas tubes, may also be considered manufacturing an unsafe handgun. See California Penal Code section, and then we'll show those later. So they're saying that it may be considered manufacturing an unsafe handgun if you were to take your handgun that you legally possess and then convert it into semi-auto. There's a huge debate to be had over what is considered manufacturing. Uh, I'm gonna leave it at that. There are some lawyers who have said that it is not considered manufacturing by just swapping an upper. And there are some people that are still of the opinion that you can't convert your single shot or bolt action repeaters. The interesting thing is this bulletin, from my memory, initially specifically said Franklin Armory and listed the Franklin Armory CA7. But the Franklin Armory CA7 is not single shot. It is a bolt action repeater. And then the Franklin Armory name disappeared from this bulletin, this warning. Something to be interested in, right? So what are the three methods? Well, the first one, which is my personal favorite, However, it is, you know, somewhat difficult to get a hold of because there's only one manufacturer doing this. Currently in the state of California, there's only one manufacturer doing it, and that is Franklin Armory. So Franklin Armory has three AR pistols on the California handgun roster because they are not semi-automatic. They are bolt action repeaters, meaning every time you pull the trigger, you have to cycle the action and then you can pull the trigger again. Boom, boom, boom. They had their CA7, which is a 7.5 inch 5.56, a CA11, which is an 11 inch 300 blackout, and the CA-12, which is a 12-inch uh, uh, 350 Legend. They have three AR pistols on the California handgun roster that are bolt-action repeaters. Not single shot, not bolt-action single shots, not break-action, bolt-action repeaters. Magazine-fed with detachable magazines that you just rack the charging handle every time. I got my CA-11, which I then later turned into an other that way. I think that going with the CA7, making it fixed mag, and then making it semi-auto would be my preferred method of acquiring an AR pistol in the state of California. Pretty simple. The hard part is it's only one manufacturer in making them, so you're fairly limited. When you can find one, I would highly recommend snagging one. Franklin Armory, keep in mind, has been a sponsor of the channel in the past. They are not currently sponsoring me, but that is simply due to my lack of effort put into uh, sending some emails and talking to them. We just haven't negotiated anything out yet, so feel free to do with that as far as bias. However, I still think, and I think many others would think, it's probably the best method because it is specifically not single shot, and the DOJ is specifically trying to threaten people about single shot. So that's something for you to think about. The next method, which is probably one that people are most familiar with, is the private party transfer. So let's say a law enforcement officer that can legally buy and sell off-roster handguns buys a stripped lower receiver. Then they build it out into a fixed mag AR pistol. That's fine. They can do that. 
they buy a strip lower off the shelf, make it into a fixed mag AR pistol as a law enforcement officer, or let's say someone moves from out of state having done that same thing, they can then sell it to anyone in the state of California. If you are in possession of a off roster firearm in the state of California, you can still sell those private party transfer face to face in a gun store. So many people do that. The problem is, is that in the state of California, cops know that it's a seller's market and they'll charge you, you know, $2,000 for a PSA AR pistol. Then you're kind of looking, you're like, well, if I'm going to swap out all the parts or if I don't like exactly how that's set up, I then still have to do all this, right? Which is kind of not ideal, right? All of these methods are clearly not ideal. We would love to just be able to make full auto SBRs in our basement without anyone uh, asking why or what's up with that. But that's not really the world we live in. You can do those things, but that's your risk that you have to take for yourself. So the private party transfer route is... Definitely, in my opinion, probably the most expensive, the hardest to really like do because you have to find someone selling it. Not everyone's familiar with Cal guns. Not everyone has access to the friends that might want to get rid of some guns. So private party transfers is one way that many people do actually go. That would probably be the most legit because you're buying a gun that is semi-auto. You're not buying a gun that has ever been single shot break top. You're, you're completely avoiding that whole bulletin from the DOJ by buying a off roster gun. So the third option, which I'm actually very fond of and is actually how I got my P320 fire control unit would be going through a company like Second Amendment Zone in Rancho Cucamonga or NorCal Firearm Supply is actually one that I found out about recently more in the Northern California region, not super North Northern California. Um, but you know, you're not driving all the way down to, uh, SoCal for it. So 2A Zone is actually who hooked me up with the P320 because I've just talked about what they do so many times. This wasn't a like a direct trade. It wasn't a brand deal that we worked out. I had just mentioned what they do because I truly believe in what they do. They're really cool. I like what they do. And then they said, hey, you've brought us so much business just by indirectly mentioning us. They sent me a P320 fire control unit. What a FFL 07 in the state of California can do, so a manufacturer they can create a single shot exempt pistol. So what they can do is make a, because it the penal code says that the descriptions of the overall length, all that kind of stuff says, shall not apply to a single shot pistol with a break top or bolt action and a barrel length of not less than six inches that has an overall length of at least 10 and a half inches when the handle frame or receiver and barrel are assembled. So, they make from a virgin receiver, one that has never been built into anything, they make a single shot break action pistol with a barrel length of at least six inches and an overall length of over 10 and a half inches. Very easy to do. You then buy that single shot exempt pistol. What you can then do is do whatever you want with it sell back the parts. If you want to look about the specifics of how both these companies do it, you're gonna to have to find their websites on your own. I'm not gonna to link directly to them. I will have links to the penal code section down below. So you can then convert that to semi-auto if you choose to do so, if you feel as if that's legal for you to do. Again, not a lawyer, not legal advice. That's one method that people do. And I think a lot of people really do like doing that because they're not the original manufacturer of it. So how can they be manufacturing is kind of the logic a lot of people use. Again, you have to be mindful. The DOJ is threatening by saying conversion to single conversion of a single shot by changing the gas tube or changing the upper may be considered manufacturing an unsafe assault or unsafe handgun. So that's up for you to decide whether you're comfortable doing that. Tons of people do it. Tons of companies openly market it. There are more companies that do this. I'm just mentioning two of them. So that's the basically the third option. The fourth option, which is one that honestly I think would probably be the least comfortable for most people and the most hands-on method would be going the 80% route. So for those of you in the state of California, you know that if you want to build an 80% lower, you have to first, you can only do metal. You can't do polymer 80% in the state of California. Just can't because you're not going to be able to embed a large chunk of metal into the frame or receiver. So just if you want to know more about that, watch my videos about 3D printing. I cover more of that. So 
you have to start with the metal lower receiver, right? Like a like a uh, 80% arms with the easy jig. You first have to apply for a serial number with the state. Once you get that serial number from the state, you engrave that onto your 80% and then you mill out that 80%. You can then make only a single shot exempt pistol. If you wanna make a pistol from an 80% in the state of California, you have to abide by the handgun roster, which can be exempted by making a single shot or break top, single shot with a break top or bolt action and a with a barrel length of over six inches and an overall length of over 10 and a half inches. So if you want to make a single shot break top with a barrel over six inches and an overall length of over 10 inches and then potentially be legally stuck with that, that's fine, you can do that. The thing is when you're the manufacturer of that 80 percenter and then you send off that information and you send off, you're like, hey, here's what I made, here's what I manufactured. Some people feel as if conversion after the fact of a gun that you manufactured would still be considered manufacturing. Some people don't, some people are comfortable. So you can choose, do you feel comfortable then making it fixed mag and making it semi-auto? So personally, I think that's the least favorable. The cool thing about having the tools to do an 80 percenter is that it would be very hard for the government to know what you did with it in the first place. If you never told them about it, never posted photos of it, never took it out in public, um, that's up for you to do with that information as you please. Don't get yourself in trouble, don't ruin your life. So the four methods, get a Franklin Armory, convert it to fixed mag and make it semi-auto. Find a private party seller in the state of California selling a semi-auto, cool. Very expensive, very hard to come by. Find a company like Second Amendment Zone down in SoCal or NorCal Firearm Supply up in Northern California. Or do it the 80% route. Those are the four options. 80% route, not ideal in my opinion, but I'm sure many people are still totally comfortable doing it and many people are doing it and they haven't been gotten in trouble yet as long as they followed all of the laws regarding homemade manufactured of firearms in California. So that's something to keep in mind. So those are your four real methods of acquiring an AR pistol in the state of California. If you have any questions, drop a comment down below. If this was insightful to you at all, let me know. I hope this was helpful. I hope this helped more people. This was a video that I had made in the past, but I wanted to make a new updated version so that more people can see it because I got a lot of questions asking about it. So I figured it's about time to make an updated video. You guys know the drill though. Have fun, be safe, stay dangerous. Peace.